everyone, this is C.B. Smallwood, and welcome to Mental Junk Food, where we talk about all things comics, sci-fi, horror, fantasy, pop culture, and everything in between. And today, we're going to be talking about all the wild and crazy stuff that's going on at DC Comics. Uh, and in particular, we're going to be talking about Jim Lee's uh, thoughts and what he had to say at the recent, uh, what is it, C2E2 Expo comic book convention thingy. Um with that said, let's go ahead and get started, and as always, I like to give credit where credit is due, and cite my sources, and this comes to you courtesy of CBR.com, and written by the fabulous, most amazing, Brian Martin, which I don't know if Brian Martin is fabulous or amazing, but still, he did take the time to write this, otherwise, I wouldn't have anything to talk about. <clears throat> Alright, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, uh, DC Entertainment and co-publisher and chief creative officer which the chief creative officer aspect of it is more what Jim Lee actually does address DC's 5G reboot and Marvel buyout rumors which the Marvel buyout rumors is I kind of believe it's garbage but whatever at the at this year's uh, 2020 uh, Chicago Comics and Entertainment Expo C2E2 um, Lee used the panel this past Saturday to blah 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 a bunch of blah 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 but uh, that was canceled due to a recent outing of DC co-publisher Dan DiDio now for those of you that's been living under a rock uh, at Bikini Bottom uh, next to Patrick I will fill you in that uh, co-publisher Dan DiDio was uh, fired let go from uh, DC Comics uh, there's a lot of rumors and speculation as to why that is um, the, the biggest thing that everybody's heard is basically a lot of editors at uh, DC got upset um, at Dan DiDio over some things and things came to a head. Uh, the straw that broke the camel's back was basically the 5G event, the, the big rebooting of all the heroes in one way or another. Who knows? And, uh, you know, we don't know the particulars of who, where, when, and why. Um, there's also rumors that a lot of big time writers for DC that have a lot of clout uh, in the comic book industry uh, may have pulled some strings because they were unhappy with uh, some of the things that uh, Dan DiDio had planned. Uh, regardless, that's all rumor. We don't really know why he was fired. All we know is that he was let go. <laughs> and this was like a couple of days ago or a week or two ago. I don't know. Um, so, getting back to the article... Um, here's what Jim Lee had to say about the 5G event, which I think is really interesting. Uh, our intent is not to do a line-wide reboot, Lee said at the panel. Let me, let me, uh, underscore this right here. Not to do. Our intent is not to do a line-wide reboot. Our focus is to continue what we've done in the past, pairing characters with great creators and continue to make diverse and amazing stories that you guys love. We're telling stories about characters that can fly and go into other dimensions. It should be a lot of fun. It's like Jim Lee is channeling uh, Stan Lee there. In a way, I kind of hope that, that, you know, as he spoke, he said it in the Stan Lee voice. That would have been really cool. But... <coughs> Sorry, folks, I'm still a little sick here. So anyway, um, that's interesting. The uh, upcoming Generation 5 storyline, the 5G initiative, was originally rumored to be a reboot of the current DC Comics universe, but Lee's comments now suggest that it is no longer the case. More details have yet to publicly surface about the event, which means the, what it means for the current DC timeline. Um, additionally, Lee partially addressed rumors of a buyout of DC publishing by Marvel. Uh, blah, 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 bunch of crap. Uh, you guys hear any good rumors lately? Uh, Lee stated upon taking the C2E2 stage. So let me start by saying to address some of the stuff that's out there, There's these are rumors. Um, there's been some speculation out there, but dosh, dong, dangity, dig, dog, dong it, dig it. DC's been around for 85 years, and we're going to be around for another 85. <laughs> <coughs> oh, man. Hack, hack, cough, cough. That's just what people want to hear in their uh, YouTube videos. So, 
that's that's what Jim Lee had to say. And oh, it's, it's just so much interesting stuff to get into, you know. And just so little time, you know, without you know boring you all to death if you're not already bored. But you know, first of all, talking about 5G, talking about 5G. You know, when I heard about the things that they were wanting to do in 5G, where they're wanting to, re to, to replace a lot, you know, basically everybody in the Justice League at one, you know, in some shape or form, you know, like Batman, um, I guess maybe Superman, who knows? You just go on through the list. Um, they're wanting to replace a lot of their core characters with more uh, diverse characters. Um, for those that don't know about the 5G event itself um, basically it was kind of created uh, because you know DC wanted to suck up to the new parent company AT&T. AT&T owns DC Comics now and AT&T is they're looking at money they're looking to make money and they're looking at companies that they've acquired that's not making them money that's actually costing them money and unfortunately, uh, nowadays, uh, comic books, a lot of pub a lot of major publishers, including DC and Marvel, um, I really don't believe they make money. <laughs> they actually lose money, um, and and basically, you know, those companies are, are more or less uh, just a, a a means to mine intellectual property. Uh, to use in cartoons, animation, uh, television shows, and in Hollywood. And anyway, I'm, I'm kind of getting off track here a little bit. So uh, 5G, you know, uh, at and is getting ready to do like a 5G uh, launch if they haven't already. And so the, the head people at DC is like, well, we're going to suck up. And we're we're going to kind of coincide that with our own 5G event. And there's like five generations of heroes, and we're gonna, you know, uh, basically upgrade all our heroes and and make them more diverse and stuff like that, which I think is a little crazy because this, this has been tried before, my friends. This really has. And uh, let me refresh your memory. Um, not too long ago, in a world not that far away, <laughs> there was a company named Marvel. Uh, that uh, I don't know if they did the Marvel Now first or if they did that afterward, but sometime, somewhere in that time period, uh, they got the idea that we're going to do an all new, all different Marvel where we're just going to piggyback uh, new characters off the success of our already established characters, you know. Um, in some cases, I'll be honest, you know, if it was just one or two characters, it would have been, I don't I don't think it would have been as big as a deal. But where they were doing it company-wide, it was just a little too on the nose, a little too uh, obvious, a little too insincere, uh, a little bit too much pandering, and not enough focus on actually trying to tell a good story. And it alienated a lot of uh, Marvel fans. Um you know, where's Steve Rogers? Why is he not Captain America? Why is Tony Stark not Iron Man? Why is Bruce Banner not the Incredible Hulk? Uh, why is Thor not Thor? Instead, you got the Falcon as Captain America, Riri Williams um, came Iron Man. Um, Jane Foster, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong when that uh, became uh, Lady Thor. Um on and on and on it goes, you know, just just uh, a, a lot of that was going on. Uh, Amadeus Cho, is that how you pronounce it, uh, became the Hulk. Now, if it was, again, if it was just one or two characters, it would have been interesting. You know, it would be a good way to change things up. Uh, best example I can give to that is back in the 90s. You remember when Wolverine had his bone claws? It made you really miss the days when he had the animanium. But it also made for some cool new stories. And... Um, you know, at some point, you know, they were going to give him back his animanium because that's part of what made him cool. But it was just a cool way to put the character through new and more interesting situations. Uh, another example, which is a little bit more, a better example, uh, back in the 90s, uh, DC had killed off Hal Jordan after he went um, insane and, and did what he did. You know, the whole, uh, I guess it was the parallax, parallax thing. And um, they replaced him with this kid named Kyle. 
Kyle's this uh, uh, young kid who who's trying to figure out you know how to be a Green Lantern and all this other stuff. You know everything was new to him, so that was kind of a cool thing. You know, it was it was new, it was fresh. Um, but you know, DC fans didn't really like that. That was just one character, okay. <laughs> But, you know, I think in hindsight, I think a lot of DC fans could look back on that and say, well, that was actually pretty cool because at some point they did get Hal Jordan back. You know, it's just temporary. Um, but here, Marvel, you know, uh, the all-new, all-different Marvel, this is what they did, and it was a disaster for the company. Uh, fans just did not like it because... Um, all their heroes were being retired. All, all the heroes that they grew up with were being retired, you know, and you have a lot of sentimental value built into those heroes. And also they're trying to introduce new diverse characters, but they did it all wrong, honestly. Like, if you're going to introduce diverse characters, okay, uh, based on skin pigmentation and gender um, and, and, I guess, sexuality, uh, the way to do that is to write cool, compelling stories and and uh, and just, you know, they don't have to piggyback on the success of already established characters. Um, there's a company that actually did that uh, with, with mixed results, which brings us back to full circle, which is, um, if I can wake this guy up, boop-a-doop-a-doop-a-doo. DC Comics, The New Age of Heroes. Do you remember that? That short-lived but most excellent little uh, 2017 run of new characters. DC Comics capitalizing on Marvel uh, not really pleasing their fans decided to uh, take a bite of the market by basically having their own version of Marvel characters. You know, uh, their Hulk was damaged. Their X-Men was the Immortal Man. Their Punisher was silence, Silencer. Their Ghost Rider was Brimstone. Their Spider-Man was Sideways, the Challengers, or whatever. Uh, you know, their Fantastic Four was the Terrifics and the Unexpected. I have no idea. But whatever. <laughs> you get the idea. And even though you can kind of see where they got the inspiration for these characters, they were original. Um, they had their own flavor to them, and, and that was really cool. Um, unfortunately, for one reason or another, and I really blame DC more than anybody, uh, nobody bought the books. Everybody bought the first issue or two of a lot of these books. But the problem was, number one, DC did not promote this uh, heavily. Uh, they had a ridiculous amount of books. Uh, like it was, it was over 52 books, I think, that they were printing at the time uh, when the New Age of Heroes came out. It's just too many comics, honestly. Um and so that kind of smothers uh, these new books that were coming out. And the other thing is, I remember back in the 90s, again, citing that, the 90s thing, uh, when uh, pff, freaking, what was it called? Heroes Were Born. That, that was just all over the place. Heroes Were Born was promoted heavy by Marvel. And it helped pay, uh, pay off for them, you know. Um, I don't feel like DC did that. I really don't. And, but anyway, let's talk about what DC did do right. Um, DC had uh, top-tier talent working on these books, at least in the initial beginning. And these characters are a diverse group of characters in, in terms of, I guess, uh, gender and, and skin pigmentation. And, <laughs> you know, uh, you can go on down the list, you know. And it didn't feel like pandering, you know, because it was great stories and great storytelling. This is how you do it, my friends. This is this is how it's done. Uh, and and these characters didn't piggyback on the success of already established characters. Granted, they did get a rub from some established characters, but they didn't, you know, try to fill those roles. They tried to be their own hero or heroines or whatever. You get the idea. Um, another problem that kind of killed this line of books was basically uh, freaking uh, a lot of the comic book creators jumped after three issues. Uh, they left the books after three issues in. Who wants to uh, keep following a book when, when the creators don't have enough faith in these books to s stick with them? You know, 
Uh, so that was something else that, that hurt a lot of these uh, comics. Uh, so, let's bring it back full circle, my friends. Jim Lee, Jim Lee. So, I think it's interesting that we got this whole 5G initiative that's basically uh, this all over again, the all new, all different Marvel. You know, that's that's what... <laughs> That's what DC was going to do, and they learned nothing from their competitor uh, in that regards. <clears throat> but whatever, whatever. Um, and the fact is, they're still, you know, instead of um, trying to make their already established characters more diverse, why don't they take uh, everything from Wildcats to the freaking Gen 13 and Death Blow owned by Wildstorm. Why don't they take and do something with that? Why don't, why don't they take uh, the New Age of Heroes line of books and do something with those? Um, but I digress, you know, whatever. It just seems common sense to me. But that's my thoughts. I want to quit scrolling up and down. I'd like to hear your thoughts down below. Uh, do you agree or disagree with anything I said? What do you think 5G is going to be? Because at this point, it's just speculation. And I don't even think DC Comics knows what 5G is going to be anymore. Um, do you think that uh, the whole 5G reboot should be basically uh, more like what I w would want to see, which is just like entirely new heroes, not piggybacking on already established heroes, just kind of being their own thing? Or do you want to see somebody else be Batman? you want to see somebody else be Superman and that, and that sort of thing? Um, do you think Jim Lee's going to do a good job as the sole publisher of DC Comics? Uh, is DC Comics in a lot of trouble? Um, whatever you think, let me know in the comment section down below. You all tend to be a lot more articulate and more well thought, thought out than I tend to be. And I love to read each and every single one of your comments. And I always do read them, even though I don't reply back to them as promptly or ever. <laughs> Sorry about that. I need to work on that. As always, this is CB Smallwood, and I will see you in the next video.